Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to throw one-handed ties. Now this procedure is nice in the sense that you don't actually have to have a patient in front of you. If you've got thread or suture or even a small rope at home, you can learn this. And it's really important because when you're throwing in central lines, or dialysis catheters, or reinforcing certain drains and tubes, this tie is very useful, and it's faster than an instrument tie, and it just makes you look more slick. So I want all my residents to learn how to do this at some point before they graduate. Now this video isn't sponsored or anything, but when I was a medical student, Ethicon used to give these tie boards away for free, and we used to use them for certain workshops. I'm not sure if they still do that, but you wanna find something like this to practice on, if you can't, you can tie your suture to anything. I used to have it on my steering wheel and in traffic, admittedly, I'd be practicing muscle memory in terms of throwing one-handed knots. So you don't need a board, you just need to find expired suture from the operating room or even in the ICU or even just thread from home, that'll work. But that's all you really need to get started with this skill. All right, so before we get started, some things to throw out there to think about. When you're practicing at home, you're usually just using your bare hands. In real life, you're going to be using sterile gloves. So very different how suture slides off your hand versus gloves that could have blood and other secretions all over it. So what I recommend is try to find a pair of unused gloves from the hospital, see if you can bring them home, and just practice with them. I'm going to use them in this video to show you. The second thing is, and you'll see surgeons doing this a lot, but spraying your gloves down with water gives it a different feel. So when I'm putting in, for example, central lines or dialysis catheters, if I have an assistant or I'll do it myself, I'll have someone squirt the sterile flush onto my gloves when I'm at the tying stage. It really helps with speed. It helps the suture slide off the gloves just a little bit easier, but without making it too grippy. So it's, it's a nice balance, try that out. That actually helped me quite a bit. And I learned that just by watching surgeons in the operating room as they tie down anastomoses and different kinds of tissues. So it's, it's a good skill to have and something to think about. All right guys, I'm gonna be trying this overhead system again. So right hand, left hand, here's that Ethicon tying board and here's the suture that it comes with. So it's color-coded, there's a white side and a purple side to sort of designate which side I'm moving at once. So we're going to first pretend that we're clamping and sending this through tissue. We're going to pull it through, and now we've got both sides. The white on the left, the purple on the right. Now remember, it's called a one-handed tie for a reason. One hand is going to stay stationary, while the other hand is the one that's doing the tying. So it's important to get ambidextrous at this procedure. I actually prefer doing it with my left hand and holding my right hand stationary. So basically the right hand's purpose is just to keep the suture taut. So I kind of keep it up and away. And then the left hand is gonna be doing the tying. So there are two motions that you alternate back and forth, back and forth. And that's how you generate your square knots. So with my left hand, the first one I'm gonna do have the suture coming above my index finger and I'm gonna bring my index finger around the purple, just like this, and lay it across the top. And then using my index finger, notice it's doing most of the work in this throw. I'm gonna pull back and bring it behind the white. So again, do it again. Purple over, white going over, behind, and then you're gonna pull kind of with the back of your index finger and pull through the loop, just like that. And you notice how the suture ends up towards me. So in that case, that's how I'm gonna tie the knot down. And you can see it come together nicely like that. So here it is in real time. Again, purple on the right, white on the left. I'm tying with my left, holding the right stationary. So bring the white over the index finger, bring purple in the opposite direction, index finger around the white and the back side of the index finger is what's going to push the suture through the loop just like that and then it ends up towards me so i pull that towards me and the purple away and that's your first throw so i undid what we just had so i can show you the second throw it doesn't really matter which one you start with you just have to remember to alternate and pull in the proper direction in this case 
what we're going to do is some people call this a karate chop, but I just, I just do it. <laughs> um, I have the suture laying over these three fingers, just like this. So it's called a karate chop because you go like that. So there's your karate chop. So again, like that. And this time the purple is going to lay that way. And this is where I use my mid middle finger more than my index finger. So the middle finger is going to come bring the purple around. And then with my middle and index finger, I grab the white and pull it through the resulting loop. Just like that. And in this case, it ends up away from me. So I'm going to pull the white away and the purple towards me. And that's the second throw. So again, in real time, karate chop, lay the purple over, use your middle finger of your left hand, come around, index finger, sorry, middle finger and ring finger will pinch the white and pull it through the loop. And because it ends up away from you, you're going to tie it down like that. All right, so now I got to put it all together, right? So I usually start with that particular order. The first throw is my first and the second throw is my second. So again, tying with the left hand, keeping the right hand stationary. The first throw is going to be my index finger is primarily what's going to be driving it. So index finger on the white like this, purple laid away from me. It's going to pull around and pull through again, using the back side of my index finger. The suture ends up on my side right here, tie it down. Next throw, karate chop, purple over, and this is where the middle finger is gonna be doing the work. So middle finger comes around and ring finger and middle finger clamp down together and pull through, just like that. It ends up away from me, tie down. And there's your square knot right there. So benefit of a square knot is it doesn't come undone. If you keep doing the same throws in consecutive order, you can lose the knot. So hopefully you all found that demonstration helpful of one-handed ties. This skill really requires practice. So go out there, get some suture, get some thread, whatever, get a tying board or just tie it on something and practice because the more you practice now, the more you get that muscle memory. And then when you're actually there in the clinical setting, you're going to be really proficient at it and ready to go. If you have any comments or questions, feedback, anything like that, drop me a comment below, subscribe, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Have a great week.